started okay welcome back guys now we are in the chapter of genetics already in the last class we have discussed about uh, the basics in the uh, genetics we have seen um, how many types of like you know how many number of genes are there where exactly the genes are there we have discussed about autosomal dominant autosomal recessive disorders we have discussed about the topics of penetrance expressivity we have discussed about the locus see these things uh, we have discussed in the last class itself okay and i have also discussed about the examples for the autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive disorders now in the last class itself i have I told you that I will be discussing some important points about the autosomal dominant disorders as well as autosomal recessive disorders. Okay. See, in the last class, I got little cold. So, the class was like, okay, so, so kind of thing. So, in this class, let's continue with the same autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive disorders. After that, we also have to complete the X-linked dominant and X-linked recessive disorders along with the Y-linked uh, -linked inheritance. Okay. So, having said that, now, in this class, let's begin with the autosomal dominant disorders. Which autosomal dominant disorders we have discussed in yesterday's class? We have discussed almost 15 disorders. I gave the examples. Okay, like anything which starts with the hereditary or anything which starts with the um, uh, familial. Like we have discussed 15 disorders. Now out of those, the first disorder which I am going to discuss now is called as a Marfan syndrome. Okay. Marfan syndrome. What? Available? Screen mirroring. Just guys, one minute, a small technical glitch. can i okay guys welcome back uh, small technical glitch so now we are discussing about the marfan syndrome in yesterday's class we have discussed marfan syndrome the tuberosclerosis okay these are all disorders osteogenesis imperfecta okay all these disorders are autosomal dominant disorders now let's see some important points about the marfan syndrome why because this marfan syndrome is a very important topic for your exams the Marfan syndrome, my question is, what is the gene defect? What is the gene that is defective in Marfan syndrome? So, what is the gene defect? The question, any idea? So, the gene defect in Marfan syndrome is fibrillin gene. The fibrillin gene is defective. So, when the fibrillin one gene is defective, what is the protein that is going to be affected? What is the protein that is affected in the Marfan syndrome? I used to remember something like Marfan, fun, F for, like, you know, Marfan, that F, F for fibrillin gene, and that protein which is defective is fibrillin protein. Okay, fibrillin protein is, is the defect, okay? So, the fibrillin protein is defective. So, the gene affected is the fibrillin, one gene, and the protein that is going to be defective, the protein that is defective here is the fibrillin, okay. Now, one important point which I want you to know here is for your exam purpose, fibrillin is very much important, fibrillin is very much important for the assembly, for the assembly of the elastin fibers, for the elastin to assemble, you need fibrillin, sir, okay. So, fibrillin is needed for the assembly of elastin fibers. So, whenever this fibrillin is defective, 
automatically the elastin will also be affected. So elastin will be negatively affected. So, so directly affected is fibrillin. The fibrillin is directly affected and also in this condition elastin, okay, elastin protein is indirect, indirectly affected on your exams they can tell you which protein is negatively affected in this condition of Marfan syndrome that is elastin. Okay. So, directly affected is the fibrillin and negatively affected is the elastin. Now, in this condition, what else you should know for your exams is, sir, in Marfan syndrome, okay, uh, this uh, uh, fibrillin, this fibrillin it's actually controls the levels of transforming growth factor beta, okay, the transforming growth factor levels are controlled by the fibrillin. Now, in this condition, the fibrillin is not there, okay, fibrillin gene is defective and the fibrillin is not there, what happens to the transforming growth factor beta levels? The transforming growth factor beta levels, okay, let me write, TGF beta, okay, transforming growth factor beta levels are going to be elevated, okay, very high. So in Marfan syndrome, they can ask in your exam, which levels are elevated? It's the transforming growth factor beta levels are elevated, okay. Now, this elevation, okay, elevated, elevation in this transforming growth factor beta is the one, this is the one which causes the symptoms. I will discuss about the clinical features later. So now, as a treatment part here, as a treatment part, so in this condition of Marfan syndrome, the transforming growth factor beta levels are elevated, okay. Now what we have to do, as a doctor, we have to decrease the transforming growth factor beta levels. So who can, which drug, okay, that's the question, which drug can actually decrease the transforming growth factor beta levels? Come on guys, what is that one drug? Come on, fun mode, MediCG, fun mode, Come on, what is the treatment? The treatment is, any idea? It is the low sartan sir, inhibitors, TGF beta inhibitors, low sartan. Okay, so low sartan is used in the treatment of Marfan syndrome. Okay, done. Well, so now let us discuss about the clinical features. Clinical features of Marfan syndrome. Now, Guys, can you tell me what are the clinical features of Marfan syndrome? There is a mnemonic, there is a very famous mnemonic, the Marfan's, the mnemonic itself is a Marfan's, okay. So first, let us write M, okay. So what exactly M stands for? In Marfan syndrome, what exactly is the M stands for? M, A, R, F, A, N, S, Marfan's. Here, the M stands for mitral wall prolapse, okay, mitral wall prolapse, excellent fun mode, yeah, excellent fun mode, mitral wall prolapse, here, let me just try to integrate, see, if I am the person, right now, if I am the person who is having a mitral wall prolapse because of the Marfan syndrome, see, I am, I am the one who is having mitral wall prolapse, now, when you auscultate, when you auscultate my heart sounds, now, what is that thing, what is that thing which you can heard, what is that keyword, if I am the one who is having mitral wall prolapse, what is that murmur kind of thing that you can hear? Any idea? In mitral wall prolapse, fun mode? Fun mode, mid ECG. Any idea? Mid? Systolic? Clicks. Okay. So, in the condition of marfal, uh, mitral wall prolapse, the patient is going to have? Yes. Okay, which one more? It's a mid systolic click. Okay, mid systolic click. Whenever you see the word mid systolic click, think about the mitral wall prolapse. Now, what is this A? A stands for A stands for aortic regurg. Okay, sorry, so not aortic regurgitation. It's a aortic dissection. Okay, so aortic dissection. Aortic dissection means, see, it's a Marfan syndrome is a connective tissue disorder. First thing you should know, sir, this Marfan syndrome, it's a connective. It's a connective tissue disorder. See, in the connective tissue, which fi uh, which the fibers are going to be affected, I, you know it. Okay, which fibers are going to be affected? It's the fibrillin. Okay, fibrillin fibers and elastin fibers are going to be affected. Now, because of this, the connective tissue is weak. Even in the iota, in the iota, the connective tissue is weak. The aortic valve is now not having proper strength. Now, in this condition, what happens is the blood, uh, the 
jet of blood that jet of blood can actually tear the aortic wall into two slices okay so what happens in this marfan syndrome is aortic dissection the blood is now passing through the wall of the aorta okay now imagine this is the aortic wall now the aortic wall is going to split split sir because of the weak connective tissue so aortic dissection uh, dissection the thing which can uh, which can ask in your exams is why why aortic dissection why because of cystic medial necrosis so cystic medial necrosis is seen in marfan syndrome this can lead to the media the media of the blood vessels okay the media of the blood vessels is undergoing necrosis okay cystic medial degeneration is seen in marfan syndrome that can lead to aortic dissection aortic dissection okay now what is r stands for any idea retinal detachment okay retinal detachment and f f stands for see i used to remember i used to remember like f marfan syndrome f f f for fibrillin 1 gene defect okay fibrillin 1 gene defect and a what is the next a sir a stands for if you if you look at this persons their fingers the fingers are too much elongated okay their fingers are too much elongated now if you look at their fingers i will show you the image their fingers are looking like a spider legs the fingers will look something like a spider legs so this is something called as arachnodactyly okay arachnodactyly i will show you the image and also in this person if you look into their uh, mouth the palate the palate is going to be in arch shape okay so arched palate okay then will the palate is going to be like a arch i will show you the image okay arched palate and what's the n stands for n stands for so these patients are going to have a near sightedness okay and last s stands for any idea what is this s stands for nasir khan fun mode any idea what is this s stands for nasir khan love from pakistan love from india okay what is that s stands for no okay let me write here subluxation subluxation of lens okay subluxation of the lens so in this patients who are having the marfan syndrome the lens is going to be dislocated the lens is a connective tissue defect right so the lens is not going to stay in the proper place so lens will be dislocated that is called as subluxation or ectopia lentis okay ectopia lentis now where this lens is going to be dislocated and which side that's also an mcq in your exam which side the lens is going to be dislocated is it going to be dislocated superiorly nasally medially or is it going to be dislocated inferiorly which side see the lens dislocation is that's an mcq supero temporal superior temporal dislocation so there will be superior temporal dislocation of the lens so that's what is seen in the marfan syndrome for your exam this is very important okay superior uh, from the aphthal okay from the aphthal superior temporal dislocation of the lens is seen in marfan syndrome but if they ask you inferior nasal dislocation okay infero infero nasal infero nasal dislocation of lens so now can anyone answer in which condition there is infero nasal dislocation so the lens is again dislocated but it is towards inferior side inferior and nasal inferior and nasal infero nasal dislocation it is seen in any idea homo cystin urea okay homo cystin urea sir okay so that's for the s subluxation of the lens Uh, which, will, which will which will be causing the uh, the ectopia lentis inferior nasal, uh, superior temporal dislocation of the lens and one more is uh, one more is here i want to discuss is these patients will have scoliosis 
okay these patients are going to have scoliosis okay these patients are going to have scoliosis and not only that the last one which i want you to know is they have pigeon shaped chest okay last p okay marfan p i used to remember marfan p this pigeon shaped chest okay you know right the the patient is going to have a pigeon shaped chest then we are going to call this condition as a uh, pectus carinatum okay pectus carinatum the pigeon shaped chest not only the, not only that pigeon shaped chest even they might be having excavation also okay pectus excavation uh, excavate okay pectus carinatum and pectus excavatum okay so both the things are possible yeah just remember okay for your exam purpose okay these persons can have pigeon shaped chest which is called as pectus carinatum okay pectus carinatum i will show you the image so these are some important clinical features which i want you to know now look here so uh, one more clinical feature i just want to add these patients are going to be very tall okay these patients are called as these patients are going to look very tall sir especially their limbs their limbs are going to be very much like you know the length the length of the limbs is going to be very much in nature so this is something called as marfanoid habitus Okay, this is something called as morphonoid habitus. So these patients are going to be very thin and slender. These patients are going to be very thin and slender with the long extremities. Okay, with the long extremities, arm length is going to be very much, uh, very much long. So this is something called as a morphonoid habitus. Now after this, you can very clearly see here. See this patient is uh, um, thin and slender. Now if you look at his arms, they are very long. They are very much lengthier. Okay, and even this female, you can very clearly see that she is having a scoliosis. Okay, scoliosis. She is having the scoliosis. And here, what else? See, I have I have told you these patients will be having some chest abnormality. That is, either they can have a pigeon shaped chest that is called as a pectus carinatum, or even they can have pectus excavatum. Okay, pectus excavatum. This is P. Pectus excavatum, or even they can have pectus carinatum. Okay, both are possible. Both are possible. Okay. Now what else, sir? What else? Look, look at the uh, the fingers. The fingers are going to be very lengthier. Okay, the, the fingers are going to be very much lengthier. Now what you can see here, sir? This is high arched palate. There is high arched palate, and you can very clearly see here there is temp superior temporal dislocation of the lens. Okay, superior temporal dislocation of the lens. Okay, that's one thing. And what else, sir? What else? See, these patients I have told you. These patients iota problems. What is that iota problem? The first there will be initially there will be aortic root dilatation. Okay, aortic root dilatation can be seen initially. See, there is aortic aneurysm, aortic root dilatation, followed by later on they will have aortic dissection. So both things are possible. Okay, let me write here. So aortic dissection and not only that aortic root dilation. Okay, aortic root dilation and aortic aneurysm okay aortic aneurysm sir and later on they can also develop the aortic dissection okay now here you can very clearly see so these patients look at their fingers how their fingers are so these fingers are very long fingers and they are called as what they are called as arachnodactyly okay arachnodactyly even the legs you can see the same thing and here you can very clearly see that's a pigeon shaped chest and the patient is going to have scoliosis okay scoliosis so these are some important points which i want you to know uh, regarding the marfan syndrome now in this marfan syndrome patients you can see you can appreciate two signs what are those two signs look here now first this one okay normally when see this is my wrist okay this is my wrist when i do like this see hardly hardly i can bring my fingers close together okay hardly okay just that touching okay but in these patients who are suffering with marfan syndrome they go see their fingers are very much lengthier they are tall they go the fingers are very long fingers okay long fingers so they can overlap the fingers are going to be overlapped even after the like you know when you put it at the wrist joint the fingers will overlap the thumb and the fingers will overlap sir okay that's the one point which i want you to know okay the fingers will overlap especially the thumb and the little finger now see thumb and little finger they will hardly meet but in these patients because the fingers are long 
okay they will overlap the thumb and even little finger will overlap so so this sign is called as a walker sign so now tell me walker sign is seen in which condition walker sign is seen in marfan syndrome sir marfan syndrome and not only that see when you try to close your wrist when you try to close your the palm like this now the thumb the thumb will never be exposed out the thumb will be never be exposed out see in me in a normal healthy person now when you close your thumb uh, like and you close your fingers like this the thumb will never come out you cannot see it okay hardly in some persons you can see a little bit amount of thumb but here look in this condition as the fingers are tall the, the large portion of thumb is being exposed to outside so this sign is called as steinberg sign okay steinberg sign so steinberg sign is again seen in which condition it is seen in marfan's marfan's syndrome okay so steinberg sign and walker sign now just tell me what is this what you are looking at here here the person is having dislocation of the lens okay, dislocation of the lens seen in marfan syndrome sir okay now after this let me show you a table so here from this table you can actually what you should know is so how to put the diagnosis okay how to put the diagnosis of the marfan syndrome okay how to put the diagnosis of the marfan syndrome is see there are major criteria which you should know see, out of i have gave you so many clinical features right? there are so many clinical features i gave you now what are the major criteria okay here see the major criteria are ectopia lentis superior temporal dislocation of the lens that's one of the major criteria aortic dilatation or aortic dissection i have discussed that's one of the major criteria and the family history positive family history why because it's a autosomal dominant disorder as it's a autosomal dominant disorder definitely the the bloodline definitely the father or the mother okay in the, in the family history definitely there will be one person who is suffering with marfan syndrome so family history that is coming positive ectopia lentis along with aortic root dilatation or the aortic dissection they are the three major criteria okay remaining all of them are the minor criteria sir okay remaining all of them they are the minor criteria which are considered as the systemic score okay we will give for every uh, thing we will give one one point okay i no need to go into that much detail only for your exam just remember what are the major criteria ectopia lentis aortic dissection and family history now you know the other important points what is the mode of inheritance of this marfan syndrome mode of inheritance is autosomal dominant okay autosomal dominant fibrillin 1 gene mutation fbn means fibrillin 1 gene mutation okay next what you should know is sir what is the most common cardiac defect sir what is the most common cardiac defect in this condition the most common cardiac defect is mitral valve prolapse already you have uh, like no you know it already i have explained mitral valve prolapse okay mitral valve prolapse sir. next what else you should know here is what is the criteria okay criteria for the diagnosis the criteria for the diagnosis for the pg aspirants this is mcq gens criteria so gens criteria is the criteria used for diagnosis so according to the gens criteria see you need to have two major criteria any two out of this three are one major plus fibrillin gene mutation okay one major one major okay along with when you do the gene assay is the fibrillin gene is getting affected so at least that thing or at least one major criteria out of this three at least one one major criteria or a systemic score greater than 7 so what is this systemic score here it's there okay no need to go in that much detail simple for your exams those who are going for the neat pg exams they should know only this thing gens criteria okay this area gens criteria it is used for the diagnosis of marfan syndrome okay modified gens re revised gens criteria okay next what is the cause of death what is the most common cause of death the most common cause of death is cardiovascular complication and what is that cardiovascular complication it is the right the most common cause of death in marfan syndrome is aortic excellent fund mode aortic dissection okay aortic dissection done so if you know these many points about the marfan syndrome the first autosomal dominant disorder that will be more than enough okay that will be more than enough okay definitely image based questions that might come in your exam now after this let's discuss about this disorder so look here and tell me fun mode uh, medici ji nazir khan guys can you tell me what is this image based question what you are looking at so these patients are ho having this small small papule kind of things what are these okay what are these tumor kind of things what exactly are they so that is yes neuro 
fibromas those are the neurofibromas so the next disorder which we are going to discuss is the neuro fibromatosis okay neurofibromatosis now my question to you is how many types of neurofibromatosis are there how many types of neurofibromatosis there are two types there are two types neurofibromatosis type 1 and neurofibromatosis type 2 neurofibromatosis type 1 as well as neurofibromatosis type 2 now questions so in neurofibromatosis type 1 first of all now wait so why the hell are we discussing about neurofibromatosis now you can ask me sir why we have discussed about the marfan syndrome because marfan is autosomal dominant disorder important autosomal dominant disorder important for what important for your exams now why we are discussing about neurofibromatosis neurofibromatosis also autosomal dominant disorder okay that's why we are discussing now there are two types of neurofibromatosis neurofibromatosis type 1 and neurofibromatosis type 2 yes monica yes chromosome number 17 as well as excellent okay so neurofibromatosis one gene okay the neurofibromatosis type 1 is because of defect in neurofibromatosis one gene okay neurofibromatosis one gene is defective the neurofibromatosis one gene is present on chromosome number 17 and neurofibromatosis type 2 gene is present on chromosome number 22 so nf1 and nf2 genes are mutated these genes are present on chromosome numbers 7 and 7 sorry 17 and 22 now okay sir you know the gene defect you know the gene defect so because of the defect in these genes which proteins are going to be affected which proteins are going to be affected sir monica can you tell me which protein is affected in nf1 neurofibromatosis type 1 can you tell me it is a neurofibromin neurofibromin okay neurofibromin is a protein defective and in neurofibromatosis type 2 it's a merlin okay merlin is a protein that is affected now sir in neurofibromatosis what are the clinical features okay there are two types of neurofibromatosis in both the conditions the patient is going to have this kind of macules this kind of spots on their skin now what is this part sir so what is this part that you are able to appreciate here or that you are seeing here what is this part on the skin this is something called as yes yes monica you are true that is cafe late spots okay so this cafe alley spots this cafe alley spots are seen just tell me in, in type 1 neurofibromatosis or type 2 uh, fibromatosis it is seen in both okay both in neurofibromatosis type 1 and type 2 both in type 1 and type 2 now after that what you are able to see here okay what you are able to look in the screen so these are the eyes okay these are the eyes now in this eyes you can see this pigmented areas in the iris okay there are these pigmented areas in this iris so what are these can you tell me these pigmented areas that you can see in the iris come on one more yes you are true it is the leash nodules excellent okay so these are the leash nodules leash nodules so these leash nodules are seen in only type 1 type 1 neurofibromatosis mcq leash nodules are seen in neurofibromatosis okay now more high yield question leash nodules are seen in which type of neurofibromatosis only seen in type 1 neurofibromatosis okay only seen in type 1 neurofibromatosis sir now apart from that sir in type 2 okay in type 2 neurofibromatosis what are some important points sir in type 2 what you will see actually let me write here in type 2 neurofibromatosis the patient is going to have some important tumors what are they schwannomas acoustic schwannomas okay acoustic schwannomas are going to be seen now in this acoustic schwannoma acoustic audition in this acoustic schwannoma which cranial nerve is going to be affected so this acoustic schwannomas are going to occur for which cranial nerve the eighth cranial nerve that is vestibular cochlear nerve eighth cranial nerve and the patients are also going to have meningiomas okay and the patients are also going to have anything else ependymomas 
okay ependymomas so these are the three types of tumors okay if a patient is suffering with a neurofibromatosis type 2 he is going to have bilateral acoustic schwannomas bilateral acoustic schwannomas where the ethereal nerve is going to be affected and the patients are also going to have meningiomas and ependymomas why all these problems because of neurofibromatosis type 2 gene which is present on the chromosome number 22 it is mutated because of that the merlin protein is Again, gone, merlin protein is defective. When the merlin protein is affected, it is going to cause neurofibromatosis type 2. And one important point regarding meningiomas, never ever forget that the patients are going to have meningiomas, sir. Meningiomas, you will see, which body? Samoma bodies. Okay, meningiomas, samoma bodies are seen. Ependymomas, ependymomas, what you will see? In ependymomas, there will be drop metastasis. Okay, ependymoma, it is a cancer, right? It is a cancer, ependymoma is a cancer. Now, it will show drop metastasis, okay, drop metastasis, okay. So, these tumor cells, they will drop into the cerebrospinal fluid, okay. These tumor cells, they will drop into the cerebrospinal fluid and they will show the metastasis, the drop metastasis, very important MCQ. Which tumors will show drop metastasis, ependymomas, question, okay. Now, which nodules completed? Now, you can very clearly see here, see, in neurofibromatosis type 1, okay. Now, what and all will be seen? They go, we know, we have already discussed, uh, sir, the patients are going to have skin. Skin involvement is a neurofibromas, this kind of a neurofibromas, these tumors are going to be seen, okay, sir. And there will be cafe LS spots are going to be seen. And the patient is going to have uh, this uh, pigmented hamartomas, the pigmented hamartomas in the iris, which are called as the Lish nodules, okay. This Lish nodules, they are called as pigmented hamartomas. Okay, they are the pigmented hamartomas in the iris. Now, apart from that, apart from that, sir, so is there is any other thing we should need to keep in your mind? Okay, yes, they are there. See, the patients are going to have, yes, cafe LS spots are there and the skin neurofibromas are there and not only that, in neurofibromatosis, this is a dermatology question, there will be axillary frickling, okay, there will be axillary frickling frickles okay frickles small 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 axillary frickling will be seen okay axillary frickling is going to be seen sir so these are the neurofibromas and these are the cafe LA spots now apart from that here you can very clearly see the patient is going to have the leash nodules which are the pigmented hematomas in the iris and one important point which i don't want to miss here is optic nerve gliomas these patients are going to have the optic nerve involvement, optic nerve gliomas, okay, let me write here, the patient is also going to have optic nerve gliomas, okay, and in the future these patients are at risk of developing breast cancer also, but anyway, important points about the neurofibromatosis completed, okay, never forget about these proteins and neurofibromin as well as medlin. Chromosome number 17, chromosome number 22, 17, 22, okay, sir? Yeah. Now, after this, let us discuss about the third autosomal disorder, which is called as tuberosclerosis. Okay, tuberosclerosis. Come on, guys, what is the gene mutation, do you know? Do you know what is the gene mutation seen in the tuberosclerosis? Any idea? Tuberosclerosis, what is the gene mutation? The gene mutation is TSC, tuberosclerosis gene, okay, TSC gene mutation. Sir, there are two types of TSC genes, TSC1 and TSC2 gene, TSC1 and TSC2 gene. The TSC1 gene and TSC2 gene, they are coding for, okay, they are coding, they are coding for which protein? They are coding for hamartin, protein, hamartin and tuberin, okay, tuberin, hamartin and tuberin, so MCQ sir, so TSC1 gene is coding for a protein called as hamartin, TSC2 gene is going to, for, going to code for a protein called as a tuberin, now because of the mutation of this TSC gene, the patient is going to have tuberosclerosis, now what are the important things which you need to know regarding the tuberosclerosis sir, very important for FMG exam as well as an EPG exam, see, the patients are going to have Something the symptoms are uh, remember it like a ash leaf, okay? Ash leaf a s h l e a f that's a mnemonic, sir. Now, when you look at these patients, these patients are going to have ash leaf spots on their skin, okay? Ash leaf spots. Now, what are these ash leaf spots? If you ask me, sir, look here, this 
white color okay this white color spots which are seen these are not hyperpigmented these are hypopigmented they will ask you ash leaf spots these macules ash leaf macules they are hypopigmented lesions on the skin okay sir and not only that this thick leathery patch this thick leathery patch like appearance on the lumbar region this is called as a chagrin's patch okay ash leaf spots are going to be seen chagrin's patch and whenever the patient is having this TSC uh, 1 gene or TSC 2 gene mutation, the patients are going to get this tuberous sclerosis where the patients are going to have the cardiac involvement that is the rhabdomyomas. Rhabdomyomas. Okay. The tumors of the heart, the rhabdomyomas. And in the lungs, okay, L stands for lung lymphangioleomyomatosis. Okay, lymphangioleomyomatosis. And E for epilepsy because of the cortical tubers. In the cortex also, these tubers will come. The tuberosclerosis, the patient is going to have the tubers. Okay, small, 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 small tubers. The tubers are nothing but the growths, like, you know, tumor-like growths. Okay, and this is very important. Angiolipomas in the kidney. Angiolipomas, when you are discussing about the renal pathology, then we will discuss, sir, in the kidneys, different types of tumors. Angiolipomas. First tumor that we will discuss in the kidney is angiolipomas. Okay, so angiolipomas are associated with which condition? Okay, angiolipomas are associated with the tuberosclerosis and finally, facial angiofibromas. Okay, see here, the patient is having an angiofibroma, that's a facial angiofibroma. Here, you can very clearly see this thick leathery patch which is present on the lumbar region, that's called as a chagrin's patch. You can see the cortical tubers can be seen that can lead to epilepsy and here also the patient is having these tubers. Okay, small, small tubers, these are the tuberosclerosis, small, small tubers will start to form. Okay. So, now we have discussed the three important autosomal dominant disorders which are important for your exam. Okay. So, tuberosclerosis, next neurofibromatosis and Marfan syndrome. Okay. Marfan syndrome. With this, autosomal dominant disorders are done. Okay. Autosomal dominant disorders. I have given 15 autosomal dominant disorders for I have selected three autosomal dominant disorders which will come in your exam. Okay. Now, after this, let us discuss about the autosomal receive disorders. Okay, autosomal recessive disorders. Guys, shall we continue? Autosomal recessive disorders. Monica, fun mode, Monica. Okay. Now, see, first thing, okay, MediCG, first thing, remember, whenever you see about any inborn errors of metabolism, right, inborn errors, Okay, inborn errors of metabolism. What are the inborn errors of the metabolism? The metabolic reactions, sir. Like, you know, the metabolic reactions are not happening properly. Like, they are leading to lysosomal storage disorders, LSDs. And glycogen storage disorders, lysosomal storage disorders, glycogen storage disorders. So, these are all the inborn errors of metabolism. Okay, because of the deficiency of certain enzymes. All these disorders will come under autosomal recessive. All disorders will come under autosomal recessive, except, I have given you exceptions, except, okay, except two disorders. Do you know? What are these except two disorders? One is Fabry's. Fabry's disease. Okay, Fabry's disease. And the second disease is Hunter's. Okay, Hunter's disease. So, Fabry's disease and Hunter's disease, these are the two exceptions these are the two exceptions okay but all other inborn errors of metabolism all other lysosomal storage disorders all other glycogen storage disorders are excelling sorry autosomal recessive all are autosomal recessive i will show you for example if you look here so here i am discussing see they go now gauchers crabs tesacs fabries okay metachromatic leukodystrophy neiman picks okay on this side hurler syndrome hunter syndrome okay now, look, every one, every one is autosomal recessive, Deco. Every one is autosomal recessive. Exceptions are what? Fabry's disease. Okay? And also this side, every one is autosomal recessive. Except Hunter. Okay? So, except Hunter, this one. Hunter is autosomal recessive. Sorry, X-linked recessive. And also Fabry's. Fabry's is also X-linked recessive. So, now right here. This is Fabry's and Hunter's, they are X linked recessive. Okay, they are X linked recessive disorders. 
Okay, that's the one important MCQ which you should know. Next, usually autosomal recessive disorders. Now, in which people you see this autosomal recessive disorders, do you have any idea? In which people they are most common, sir? In which people they are most common? These autosomal recessive disorders. In which people? Those people who are marrying within the relations. Okay. So, those people who are marrying, like you know, consanguineous marriages within the family when they marriage, now they will get autosomal recessive disorders. Okay. Consanguineous marriages. Okay. Okay, consanguinity, consanguineous marriages, okay, blood relation. If you marry a person who is related to you, very closely related to you, and when you, you have a baby, that baby is going to get one of the autosomal residue disorders, okay, more likely to get the autosomal residue disorders. That's the one thing which you don't, uh, like, you know, which you should never forget. So, consanguineous marriages, we can lead to autosomal residue disorders, okay. Next, now, let's discuss about uh, some important points. First, let's discuss about a condition called as all captonuria. Okay. All captonuria. Monica, fun mode, Medi CG. Can you tell me all captonuria in this condition? In this condition, may what is that enzyme deficiency? All captonuria, sir. The patient, if whenever the patient goes to urine, the patient is going to have the mousy order urine. Okay, the mousy order. The urine is going to have the mousy order. Guys, can you tell me? Monica? Phenylketonuria. Sorry, first we are discussing about. Sorry, uh, first let, let me discuss about phenylketonuria. Not all captonuria, phenylketonuria. Okay. Phenylketonuria, the patient is going to have the most order urine. What is phenylalanine? Alanine. Hydroxylase deficiency. Okay, phenylalanine hydroxylase deficiency. Now, okay, all captonuria. So, the patient is having all captonuria. What is the enzyme deficiency? Homo six. Excellent, Monica. Yes, you are true. Okay, yes, homo six. Okay, acid. Okay, homo six acid oxidase deficiency. So, homogenesic acid oxidase deficiency can lead to alcaptonuria, alcaptonuria. Now, in this condition, tell me, so the homogenesic acid oxidase is deficient. So, the homogenesic oxidase is not getting broken down. Now, this homogenesic uh, acid, it will start to deposit, it will start to deposit in cartilages. Okay, this homogenesic acid is going to start to deposit in the cartilages. So, whenever you see the cartilaginous material, now it will look black in color. See, look here, this little blackish in color, little light bluish to blackish in color. So, this condition is called as deposition of this homogenesic acid in the cartilaginous part, which will give which is giving the black color appearance, is called as is called as acronosis. Okay. Okay, no acronosis. Now this is an image-based question that will come in your exam. So acronosis is seen in Alcaptone urea, homogenesic acid oxidase deficiency. Now, what kind of disorder is it? It is autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive? It's an autosomal recessive disorder. Okay, it's an autosomal recessive disorder, sir. Okay. Now, in the beginning itself, I have told you something, sir. All the lysosomal storage disorders and all the glycogen storage disorders they follow what? They follows autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. The first disease now I am going to discuss here. It's called as a Tay-Sachs disease. It okay, Tay-Sachs. Tay-Sachs disease. Now, in this Tay-Sachs disease, see, I find this, like, you know, the beautiful images from the internet. Now, in this Tay-Sachs disease, I am asking you, what is the enzyme deficiency? Can anyone tell me? So, what is the enzyme deficiency? Hexosaminidase A, Tay-Sachs. Hexosaminidase A deficiency. Okay, hexosaminidase A deficiency. Now, look here. In the Tay-Sachs disease, okay, what is happening? See, there is hexosaminidase A deficiency. Now, normally, normally, they go, normally, they go, hexosaminidase, it helps in the breakdown of GM2 gangliosides. See, there are some things called as a GM2 gangliosides. Okay, gangliosides are a type of lipids. Okay, they are a type of lipids, sir. Okay, they are a type of glycolipids. 
Now this GM2 gangliosides need to be broken down. Who break down this GM2 gangliosides? So the GM2 gangliosides need to be broken down with the help of hexosaminidase A. If the hexosaminidase A, if it is deficient, do you think that GM2 gangliosides is going to be converted? It is going to be broken down? No. So GM2 gangliosides will start to accumulate inside the lysosomes. Now let me show you. Okay, for example, look here guys. Now here I am talking about the lysosomal storage disorders. Okay, lysosomal storage disorders. They go GM2 gangliosides. Let's begin with the GM2 gangliosides. Now, the GM2 ganglioside need to be converted, need to be broken down into GM3. Okay, with the help of which enzyme? With the help of this first enzyme, that is hexosaminidase A. When this hexosaminidase A, when it is a deficient, it is not there. It is going to cause which disease? Tay-Sachs disease. So, in Tay-Sachs disease, which levels are going to be elevated? GM2 ganglioside levels are elevated. Where? In lysosome. So, in the lysosome, the GM2 ganglioside levels are elevated. The GM2 gangliosidosis. Now, gangliosides are getting accumulated inside the lysosome. Right? So, now these patients, they go. So, these are the lysosomes. Okay, these are the lysosomes. See, the lysosomes within the neurons, especially within the neurons, inside these lysosomes, who is getting accumulated? Sir, the GM2 gangliosides are getting accumulated. Okay? See, the swollen gangliosides. Okay, the swollen gangliosides inside the lysosomes. So, now, in the lysosome, the gangliosides are getting accumulated. That is giving this onion skinning appearance. Okay, onion skinning appearance. Onion skin lysosome. Okay, guys, do you understand? Accumulation of GM2. That's a very important MCQ. If I am the examiner, I will give you. In which are the following lysosomal storage disorder? The GM2 gangliosides will start to accumulate inside the lysosomes. It is Tay-Sachs. Hexosaminidase A deficiency. Because of the accumulation of this GM2 gangliosides in the isosomes, you are going to have onion skinning appearance. Okay, something like this. Okay, onion skinning appearance is going to be seen inside the lysosomes. So, they will ask you, what is this organelle, sir? This organelle is a lysosome. Who is getting accumulated inside? GM2 gangliosides. Okay, where? Especially in the neurons. So it's a neurodegenerate new disease. See, there will be progressive neurodegeneration in this disease. Okay, mainly... The neural related problems are going to be seen, sir. Apart from that, in this disease, the Tay-Sachs disease, now can you guys tell me what is this? What is this that you are able to appreciate here in this Tay-Sachs disease? Come on, Monica, what is that? Excellent, Monica, excellent. Seems like you are a good girl. Okay, Monica, this is a cherry red spot. Okay, cherry red spot. Monica, can you tell me, sir, cherry red spot, Okay, cherry red spot in the macula. Excellent. One more, cherry red spot is seen in the macula, in the region of macula. Or they can say cherry red spot in the fovea also. Fovea the macula. Okay. Now, my question to you is, right, cherry red spot is seen. Do you know in any other condition the cherry red spots are seen? So, cherry red spots are seen in any other condition. Do you have any idea? Cherry red spots are seen. Do you think only cherry red spots are going to be seen in this uh, hexosaminidase A deficiency test acts? Any other area? No. No one more. You need to know the differential diagnosis of cherry red spot. So they go. Look here, this is not something specific. Cherry red spots on the retina, they are not something specific, sir. Important MCQ for your exams. You will study this in your uh, aphthal. See, in, this is very important. Look, from the ophthalmology point of view, this is very important. This is something called as <coughs> central retinal artery occlusion, CREO. Okay, central retinal artery occlusion. Okay, Tay-Sachs disease, Neiman picks, Gaucher's disease, and trauma. Okay, so in all these conditions, okay, central retinal artery occlusion, Tay-Sachs disease, Neven Pick's disease, Gotcha's disease, in all these conditions, you are going to see cherry red spot. Okay, you are all going to see the cherry red spot, sir. Okay. Cherry red spot in the macula. Okay. Now, what is this? What are you looking at here? So, these are the neurons which are now becoming obese. Now, these are ballooned out neurons, sir. These are the ballooned out neurons. The neurons are becoming ballooned out because of the accumulation of the GM2 gangliosides. Now, the, they will pull the water. Now, they are getting ballooned. So, this is called as ballooning of the neurons. This is cherry red spot. And don't forget, cherry red spot is not only just seen in this one condition. Uh, that is 
this disorder. Uh, Tay Sachs, it is also seen in Neiman Picks as well as also Gaucher and also seen in the trauma conditions. Trauma condition leading to edema. Okay, Berlin's edema. Now, what else you should know? What else you should know? Regarding this uh, Tay-Sachs disease. My question to you, just answer me. Sir, in Tay-Sachs disease, if the patient is going to have hepatosplenomegaly, in Tay-Sachs disease, in this lysosomal storage disorder, very important MCQ, does the patient is going to have hepatosplenomegaly? Any idea? See, they go. Look here. You know already, we have discussed about the Tay-Sachs. Tay-Sachs, autosomal recessive. Sir, see, there is hexosaminidase A deficiency, so that GM2 ganglioside levels are going to be elevated. Now, see, you are going to have cherry red spot. Okay, in the macula. Macula shows the cherry red spot and there is neurodegeneration. Okay, progressive neurodegeneration. So there is onion skinning of the lysosomes is seen. Okay, sir, cool. But here, have I ever mentioned that there is hepatosplenomegaly? So, there is no hepatosplenomegaly. Okay, whenever you see the word hepatosplenomegaly, forget about the tay sachs So, write no hepatosplenomegaly. Megaly. Okay. Hepatosplenomegaly. No hepatosplenomegaly. It is seen in other conditions. Now, let us discuss about the Neiman Fick disease. Neiman Fick's. Now, first question. Sir, in Neiman Fick's disease, what is the enzyme deficiency? Okay. In Neiman Fick disease, what is the enzyme deficiency? Any idea, guys? Any idea Neiman Fick's disease? Don't see, don't look. I'm asking you, Neiman Fick disease, what is the enzyme deficiency? Look here, come to this table. Same. Look here, Neiman Fick's disease. Normally, the sphingomyelin, okay, the sphingomyelin, phospholipids, it's a phospholipid. Now, the sphingomyelin need to be converted into ceramide. Okay, the sphingomyelin need to be converted into ceramide. Where? In the lysosomes. With the help of which enzyme? The sixth enzyme, sir, which is sphingomyelinase. Okay, so now deficiency of this enzyme, sphingomyelinase, will lead to what? Elevated levels of sphingomyelin. The sphingomyelin levels are going to be elevated in the lysosomes. Now sphingomyelin start to accumulate. So now the sphingomyelin is starting to accumulate inside the lysosomes. Okay, so that will lead to, that will lead to this kind of appearance. So what is this appearance, sir? This appearance, these are called as the zebra bodies. Okay, these are called as the zebra bodies and zebra you see the white black white black stripes right so these are the zebra bodies okay so important points which you should know is that this lysosomal storage disorders are mainly seen in the jewish population okay the Ashkenazi jews okay so especially when you are giving your board exams uh the usmle kind of exams are the the, the plab exams there this is very much important so they will say something like uh, there is this one person who is an Ashkenazi Jew so coming from so and so like you know Middle Eastern country. Now he is having so and so features. They will give you. Okay. So Ashkenazi Jews important. They are seen in Ashkenazi Jewish population. It's astrosomal recessive disorder. Okay. Astrosomal recessive disorder. Now what is the deficiency? Deficiency of an enzyme called as sphingomyelinase. Accumulation of what? Accumulation of sphingomyelin. Accumulation of sphingomyelin. Now see even this Neiman picks. Even in this new even because the patient is having neurodegeneration. True, the patient is going to have neurodegeneration. The patient is going to have cherry red spots. But hepatosplenomegaly is seen in this condition. So there is hepatosplenomegaly. Okay, sir. So in this, the patient is going to have hepatosplenomegaly. And not only that, and not only that, these patients are going to have the foam cells MCQ. These patients are going to have the foam cells. What are the foam cells? Okay. Give me one minute. Let me keep it charged. Okay. Done. So, what are the foam cells? Foam cells are nothing but the lipid-laden macrophages. On light microscopy, you can see the lipid-laden macrophages. So, those are called the foam cells. And you already know, I have discussed, on the electron microscopy, you can see the zebra bodies. Okay, you can see the zebra bodies. But, one point I want you to know. Sir, see, if, if I ask you something like this. Zebra bodies are seen in. Now, you can say, sir, zebra bodies are seen in this Neiman picks, but zebra bodies are only seen in Neiman's pick disease. No, zebra bodies are not only seen in the Neiman's pick disease. Let me show you. First, look here. See zebra bodies and foam cells. Okay, zebra bodies and foam cells seen in Neiman picks. Okay, deficiency of sphingomyelinase. Sphingomyelin will start to accumulate. The patient is going to have cherry red spot. Neurodegeneration, hepatosplenomegaly, foam cells and zebra bodies. Okay, sir, good. Looking everything good. 
But my question is, sir, these zebra bodies are the only, only seen in this? No, sir. Look here, zebra bodies. So where else you will see the zebra bodies? Fabris, MCQ. Okay, Fabris. Fabris also shows zebra bodies. But what is something important about the Fabris? Sir, Fabris is a lysosomal storage disorder, but it is having X-linked recessive pattern of inheritance. It is not autosomal recessive. It is X-linked recessive pattern of inheritance. Now, where else you will see the zebra body, sir? In any other place, you will see the zebra bodies. Yes, you can still see here. They go, sir. Zebra bodies are also seen in Hurler and Hunter. Okay, Hurler and Hunter. So now, right? Zebra bodies are not specific. Okay, zebra bodies, especially for the PG exams, right? Zebra bodies are seen in Neiman Fix disease. Fabris disease, Fabris disease, Hurler and Hunter. Okay, Hurler and Hunter. So, this is very important MCQ. Zebra bodies are seen in Neiman Fix disease, Fabris disease, Hurler disease, as well as Hunter disease. Now, next question. Next question. Sir, in this condition, Neiman Fix disease. Okay, so you can ask me, sir, why we are discussing in detail? Because 100% there is no doubt. In every damn exam, doesn't matter whether it is FMG exam, NEET PG exam, INICT exam or board exams, 100% there will be questions on lysosomal storage disorders. If it is even central institute exam, if it is a central institute exam uh, like INICT, many questions will come on the lysosomal storage disorders. Okay? Now look here. Now tell me, sir, hepatosplenomegaly is seen in. Hepatosplenomegaly is seen in tay -Sachs? No. In Tay-Sachs, there is no hepatosplenomegaly. Where hepatosplenomegaly is seen? Sir, hepatosplenomegaly, it is seen in Neiman Pix. But in which other lysosomal storage disorders? You will see hepatosplenomegaly. Deco, starting one, that is Gotchers. In Gotchers also, you will see hepatosplenomegaly. Okay, done, sir. Next, where else, sir? In Harler and Hunter. So, in Hurdler and Hunter also there is hepatosplenomegaly. So, now write hepatosplenomegaly is seen in. Okay, hepatosplenomegaly, it is seen in Neiman Pix disease through Gotchers. Next, Hurdler and Hunter. Okay, so this is how you have to prepare for your exam. Okay, so whenever you are seeing hepatosplenomegaly, that can be seen. They can give something a question like this: Which of the following, which of the following fam the exam? I will give something like this: Which of the following lysosomal storage disorders are shown to have hepatosplenomegaly? Neighbors pick disease, Gorges disease, Hurdler and Hunter. Which of the following lysosomal storage diseases are shown to have cherry red spot? Cherry red spots are seen in these three diseases. Okay. Chariot spots are seen in tay sachs disease, Neiman Pix disease as well as the Gaucher's disease. Okay. Three. So done, sir. Now, after this, Gaucher's disease. Now, Gaucher's disease, can anyone tell me it is due to deficiency of? Any student, any intelligent student, Monica, Monica, can you tell me? Gaucher's disease is due to deficiency of? Monica, fun mode, Varun Kashyap. Where is Reen today? Reen is not there today. Rain is missing, seems. Now, Gauss's disease is due to deficiency of? Haven't studied biochemistry? Beta glucocerebrosidase is fun mode, yes. Okay, now look here. We are discussing about what? We are discussing about the Gauss's, right? See, they go here, it's a Gauss's. So, Gauss's disease, normally the glucocerebroside. Okay, the glucocerebroside need to be, the glucocerebroside need to be converted into ceramide. Okay. Now, who will convert this glucocerebroside into ceramide? Glucocerebrosidase. Okay, the third one, see, they go. Glucocerebrosidase. Okay, the beta-glucocerebrosidase, or simply you can call it as beta-glucosidase. Beta-glucocerebrosidase. Okay, Indian books, we simply say, like, you know, beta glucocerebrosidase deficiency is going to cause Gaussers. Now, who is going to be elevated? Who is going to be accumulated in the body? In the lysosomes, the glucocerebroside is going to be accumulated. 
okay so what is that important mcq that came in the recent neat pg exam in the recent neat pg exam this question was asked okay this is the image based question was asked so what is this image based question so these are the macrophages sir these are the macrophages which are called as the gaucher cells now whenever you look at this macrophages now they are looks like a tissue paper which is crumpled you take a tissue paper you just crumple it okay you just fold it into like you know just just do it like this now when you open it how it will look okay how it will look so that is something called as that crumpled tissue paper appearance okay Cr yes crumpled paper okay crumpled tissue paper appearance so this is seen in gaucher's disease due to deficiency of what deficiency of beta glucose cerebro sides okay beta glucose cerebro sides now my question to you sir in this condition in this condition gaucher's what are the two important clinical features which you should know okay sir gaucher's is going to cause mainly bone related problems okay bone problems sir bone pain is going to be there okay gaucher's pain mainly the bone related pain and these patients are going to have hepatosplenomegaly hepatosplenomegaly is present we have discussed hepatosplenomegaly is seen in the gaucher's okay look here in the gaucher's you see gaucher's the patient is going to have hepatosplenomegaly now look sir one by one the gaucher's disease autosomal recessive you know it deficiency of beta glucose cerebrosidase so glucose cerebroside levels are going to be elevated the patient is going to have hepatosplenomegaly the bone crisis bone pains okay bone pains very very important mcq avascular necrosis avascular necrosis of the fever fema okay avascular necrosis of the fema bone crisis or bone pains okay and you know the gaucher cells gaucher cells will show crumpled tissue paper appearance okay, crumpled tissue paper appearance done okay so these are done with the gaucher disease if you know this much gaucher disease is enough bone pain hepatosplenomegaly avascular necrosis glucose cerebro beta glucose cerebrosidase deficiency so cerebroside levels okay glucose cerebroside levels are going to be elevated so that will cause gaucher cells you will see the gaucher cells where there is tissue crumpled crumpled uh, crumpled tissue paper appearance now then sir autosomal dominant diseases autosomal recessive disorder uh, disorders important important points for your exams are completed now let's discuss about x linked recessive disorders okay now shall we discuss about x linked recessive disorders we'll complete the topic this entire topic x linked recessive disorders and x linked dominant disorders we can complete in uh, hardly 20 minutes hardly 20 minutes sir. shall we guys shall we are you guys ready okay done now tell me sir mainly in this x linked recessive disorders which group is going to be affected do you know which group is going to be affected males or females which sexes are going to be affected in x linked recessive disorders Hmm? Males or females? What do you think, guys? What do you think? Males. All problem for males. Males are mainly okay, mainly affected. Okay, next thing is recessive disorders. The males are going to be mainly affected. Let me show you the example, sir. Now let's take X and Y. Now we are not discussing about the autosomes. Autosomes wala business completed. We are not discussing about the autosomes. We are discussing about now sex chromosomes X and Y. They are the sex chromosomes. Now X and Y. Now is a male. That's the father and mother, sir. X and X. Now these are X-linked recessive disorders, right? So I am taking now small X. Small X means affected. Mother is affected. Okay, the mother is affected. Okay. Now whenever this couple, father and mother. Okay, whenever this couple, when they have children, what are the possibilities? Dekho. Now. X, small X. Okay, one capital X, one small X. See now, mother. See now, she is a carrier. Now these are recessive disorders, right? Now these these are the recessive disorders. Now see now she is having one small X, one capital X. Now she is a carrier, sir. Now she is not affected. She is just a carrier. And the father is healthy father. Now, one female born XX. Now. Again, one capital X, one small X. Again, carrier female. Again, carrier female. Now, see, they go small X and Y, sir. And one capital X and Y. See, now tell me. See, this is a healthy. See, this is a healthy son. X and Y, healthy son. 
This is a carrier daughter, carrier daughter, right? This is carrier. Carrier female. Now the carrier daughter. This is also carrier. Carrier female. Now who is affected at the end of the day? Here, who is affected is this male, sir. This guy, see, they go, he's having a small x, small x. Now he's only having one x, sir, one x. Males, are, females are having two x's. But male is having one x and that two, this is a small x. So definitely, now in this heterozygous state, now it will express. Actually, I shouldn't say heterozygous here. Now there is only one x, right? So now the small x is going to show the disease. So this is affected. Son. Affected son, this is normal son. So it's a males are going to be affected in X-linked recessive disorders. Males are going to be affected. Done. Now exceptions. Okay, let me write here the exceptions. Okay, exceptions. So in which conditions females are going to be affected? Female affected with X-linked recessive disorder. So, in which condition the females are going to be affected with the X-linked recessive disorders? Now, first condition is Turner's. Turner's female. Now, guys, can you tell me what is a Turner female? What is a Turner female? Pankaj, Varun Kashyap, Monica, Max Maid. Max Maid. Can you tell me? So, what is a Turner female? What is the problem with the Turner female? 45 X0. Zero, X0. Zero. Now, which means she is only having one X chromosome. Normally, how she was supposed to be? How she was supposed to be? See, she was supposed to be something like this. X, X. She was supposed to have two X chromosomes. Now, she is only having one X chromosome. Now, for example, now this female is having small X, 45, small X, O. Now, tell me that there is no capital X. There is no dominant genes. The dominant genes are not there now. Now she is having her time bad. Normal X chromosome is gone. Okay. Normally, if a female is like this, for example, see, they go. Now, like this, sir. I am telling you, one female who is having this kind of genotype, capital X and one small X. Now, this is an autosomal recessive, recessive disorder. Now, is she going to have any problem? There is no problem. She will become the carrier. There is no disease. But now, what if in Turner syndrome? In Turner syndrome, this is gone, sir. Capital X is gone. What if the capital X is gone? Now she is only having small x, x0. Now she will start to manifest the X-linked recessive disorders. So X-linked recessive disorders can be seen in Turner female. True. Okay, true. Second thing, lionization. Okay, so due to the process of lionization, yes, there is a chance that a female can have X-linked recessive disorders. Now we will get it out. Sir, what is this lionization? Lionization principle, lion's hypothesis is, now tell me, male, okay, now just, let's, let's see here. Now, males are having X, Y chromosome, okay, X chromosome and Y chromosome, okay, so male is having only one X, sir, one X, one set of genes. Now, females are going to have X, X, now she is having two X chromosomes, so we need to balance, right? So what happens is generally in the body, generally in the body, one X chromosome is inactivated randomly in different, different cells. For example, randomly, this X chromosome, one X chromosome is going to be inactivated. Okay, one X chromosome is going to be inactivated. Okay, so this is something called as a lineization principle. Now, let's see, let's take one female. Now this female is capital X and small x, capital X and small x. Now, time bad in her, time bad, her capital X chromosome have undergone inactivation. Now, this capital X undergone inactivation. This is inactivated. Now, who is going to be expressed now? Only this will be expressed. So, the defective genes are going to become expressed. Now, she will develop X-linked recessive disorders. Okay, now she is going to have the X-linked recessive disorders. So, this is one possibility. Where a female, see now she is a female, now she is developing X-linked recessive disorder because of the process of lineization. Now in this lineization, what is happening? The capital X, the good chromosome, the good chromosome is getting inactivated. Okay. Now, the third possibility. Okay, the third possibility is, okay, the third possibility is 
Now, a diseased male cell. Now, the diseased male. Let me write here. Is our X-linked recessive right? So, diseased male, small x and y. Okay, this is right. Small x and y is a diseased male. Now, he is marrying, he is marrying a carrier female. Okay, he is marrying a carrier female. Not marrying, they are having kids. You are not to be married, right? So, x, y. Now, they are having kids with carrier female. So, carrier female means like this. Small x and non capital X. Small x and non capital X. Okay. Now, they go. Now, if they have having children, what are the possibilities? The possibilities will be something like this. They go. Small x, small x. Small x, capital X. Okay. Y and small x and y. Next, capital X and Y. See, capital X and Y. Now, what you are looking at here? Okay, what you are looking at here, sir? Deco, guys. Now, I told you, general principle is, general principle is what? Sir, X-linked recessive disorders, hai na? these X-linked recessive disorders, they are going to mainly affect the males. Females are usually not affected. But now, see, in this combination, who is affected? Female, small x, small x. Now, she is in homozygous state. Now, female is affected. Okay, so never forget when a diseased male, okay, diseased male with which disorder? With some autosomal recessive, uh, sorry, with some uh, X-linked recessive disorder, with some X-linked recessive disorder, he is affected. Now, this diseased male, when he married a carrier, carrier female, now they are going to have a female child, now they are going to have a female child who is going to be affected. Okay, this is how females can be affected, sir. So, now tell me, in which three conditions the female can get X-linked recessive disorders? One is internal syndrome. Second one is due to lineization. Due to lineization, if one X chromosome is now inactivated, the healthy X chromosome is inactivated. And the third condition is when a diseased male marries a carrier female. Okay, done, sir. Now, examples that I should teach you. Okay, examples. What are the diseases? Diseases. Diseases, sir. Now, it's very simple. Very simple, guys, diseases. Mnemonic is A, B, C, D, E, F. Something like this. Okay, it will go, go on like this. Now, what are these diseases? A for any idea? Hemophilia A and B. Hemophilia A and B are X-linked recessive disorders. Then hemophilia C. Hemophilia C, remember, very important, hemophilia C, it is autosomal recessive, right? In autosomal recessive part, you just add it, okay? So, autosomal recessive is hemophilia C, but hemophilia A and B are X-linked recessive disorders, okay? B for, B for Burton's, Burton's, A, Gamma, Globinemia. Burton say gamma globinemia, sir. Now imagine I am the person. Okay, you should know this. If I am the person who is having Burton say gamma globinemia, I am the one who is suffering with this. Okay, it's an excellent recessive disorder. Okay, cool, sir. Now can you tell me what is the problem in Burton say gamma globinemia? What is the problem, sir? Do you know what is the problem? Main problem, guys. Do you have any idea? Monica, do you know what is the problem in Burton say gamma globinemia? It is defect in Opsonization. Okay, defect in the process of opsonization. See, A gamma globinemia, the globulins, gamma globulins, antibodies are not getting produced. The B cells are not producing the antibodies. So, opsonization cannot happen. Very important. Opsonization defect is seen in burden say gamma globinemia. C for color blindness. Okay, C for color blindness. Which color blindness? Color Blindness, okay. Which color blindness? It is red green. Red green color blindness. So, this is a question which was recently asked. Red green color blindness is most commonly seen which sex? Males or females? It's X linker recessive disorder. So, males will be most commonly affected. So, males are affected, sir. 
okay so color blindness okay not only this one more disease which is called as a cgd okay cgd monica can you tell me monica kashyap fun mode guys can you tell me what is the cgd disease we have discussed in the topic of inflammation what is cgd chronic granulomatous disease okay chronic granulomatous disease Okay, chronic granulomatous disease. Recently, in one of the exams, this question was asked: Nitro blue tetrazolium test is done for detecting nitro blue tetrazolium test. Nitro blue tetrazolium test is done for chronic granulomatous disease. Okay, but anyway, that we will discuss later. So, color blind is completed as well as chronic granulomatous disease completed. D four, any idea? D four, guys, D four, any idea? Any idea? Let me let me show you. See this disease. In this disease, sir, the way the baby he cannot stand properly. Okay, so he is now standing with the help of his upper extremities. And if you look at the calf of this baby, if you look at the calf, calf muscles of this baby, the calf muscles are going to be very big, very big. That is called as a pseudo calf hypertrophy. Guys, can you tell me what is this, Monica? Duchenne's, excellent. DMD, Duchenne's, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, sir. So D. So Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. What is the problem in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy? So Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is X-linked residue disorder. Okay, X-linked residue disorder. Okay. Now what is the problem? Dystrophy in dystrophin protein is completely absent. Completely absent. Not just defect. Not just deficiency. Complete absence of the Dystrophin. For example, if there is dystrophin deficiency, a defect, sir, that is going to cause Becker's muscular dystrophy. Becker's muscular dystrophy. So D stands for here, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, as well as Becker's muscular dystrophy. Right? I am just uh, writing here both things here itself. So Duchenne's muscular dystrophy and Becker's muscular dystrophy. Becker's is because of the deficiency. Duchenne's is because of the complete absence. Complete absence, sir. Now, because of that deficiency in that protein dystrophin, the patient is going to have weak muscles, weak skeletal muscles. So, the sign is called as Gower's sign. Gower's sign. Okay, the patient is like just standing with the help of this, uh, like you know, the upper extremity is the Gower's sign. Okay, done, sir. Now, E for what is this E stands for? A, B, C, D completed. Now, E. Any idea, guys? Any idea? E stands for? E stands for the highly elastic joints. I used to remember something like that. Okay, hi, uh, sorry. Highly elastic. Uh, okay, that I will discuss later. E. I used to remember something like is Leash E. Leash E. Leash Nyhans syndrome. Okay, Leash Nyhans syndrome. Okay, E. So, this is one thing which you need to by heart. Leash. Lee. Okay, Leash Nyhan syndrome. Now, guys, can you tell me what is the problem with the Lishnehan syndrome? Which enzyme deficiency? Lishnehan syndrome. Lishnehan syndrome is due to deficiency of HGPRT. Okay, hypoxanthine phosphoribotransferase deficiency. Now, because of this deficiency of hypoxanthine phosphoribotransferase, the patient is going to have Lishnehan syndrome. Recently, I have posted this even in my Instagram also. Now, see, look here. See, what is your diagnosis? Now, they go. Sir, the patient, see, what is your diagnosis? The question will something come like this. The patient is suffering with gout. The patient is suffering with intellectual disability. And there is self-mutilating behavior in a boy. There is self-mutilating behavior, sir, in a boy. Okay. So, why specifically I am talking about a boy here? Because X-linked recessive disease is going to affect the males. Okay. So, here, what is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is, sir, the, if a person is suffering with the gout, intellectual disability and self-mutilating behavior, this patient is suffering with Lishnehan syndrome, hypoxanthine phosphoribotransferase deficiency. It's an autosomal, sorry, it's a X-linked recessive disorder. Done, sir. E completed. Lish, E completed. E, after this, after this, what we have to discuss? F. Do you know what is this F? F, sir, any idea about the F, sir? Any idea? Fabrice.
Okay, see fibrous is lysosomal storage is under, but still, what is the deficient, uh, what, what it is coming under? It is coming under X-linked recessive, okay, and fragile X syndrome, okay. See, even fragile X syndrome, it will be discussed in the X-linked dominant also, but it is mainly X-linked recessive, okay. It shows two patterns, fragile X syndrome will show X autosomal dominant as well as autosomal recessive. It is more of autosomal recessive when compared to X-linked, sorry. Uh, it's more of X-linked recessive, not autosomal, X-linked recessive, not the, it's also, of course, it also follows the X-linked dominant pattern, but most commonly it is X-linked recessive pattern, this is, okay. EF completed, sir. After EF, G, right? So, G stands for G6, PD, deficiency, anemia. Okay, G6, PD, deficiency, anemia. Okay, in this G6, PD, deficiency, anemia, more number of free radicals are going to be generated inside the RBCs. Now, what happens? Guys, anyone tell me what is this? Sir, in the RBCs, are you able to appreciate this precipitated hemoglobin? Sir, this precipitated hemoglobin, this is called as Hinge bodies. So, Hinge bodies are seen in G6 period deficiency. Now, what are the cells called as? This helmet shaped cells. Okay, this helmet shaped cells, sir. Okay, where the splenic macrophages, they have just take a bite. The macrophages just have a take a bite. So, these are called as bite cells. Yes, excellent. These are called as bite cells. Bite cells. So, bite cells and hinge bodies, they are seen in, okay, bite cells and hinge bodies are seen in G6 period deficiency. Anemia, don't forget. For your exams, what you will see? Bite hinge bodies and bite cells. Okay, hinge bodies as well as the bite cells. Okay, EFG completed next H. H stands for what? You already know. The, the hunters. Okay, hunters. Hunters disease. Okay, in hunter disease. Okay. So with this, all the X-linked recessive disorders are completed. X-linked recessive disorders are completed. Now the last five minutes topic, it's the X-linked dominant disorders. Okay. Just you need to know the examples, that will be more than enough. See, let me write X linked dominant. Disorders. Now, my question to you, sir, in this X-linked dominant disorders, X-linked dominant disorders, who are going to be affected? Now, who are going to be affected? For example, dominant, right, X-linked dominant. Now, let me take a father, sir. Okay, now I am just keeping this prime symbol, which means defect, defect, dominant. There is some gene defect, okay. X, Y, the father is affected. Because father is going to, the father is a male, right? He's going to have only one X chromosome. If he's affected, that's it. Okay. So, he's going to have, he's married with now some normal healthy female, sir. Normal healthy female. Now, tell me. What are the combinations? So, girls are going to be affected or boys are, boy shells are going to be affected or girl shells are going to be affected. Now, when they have, when this couple, when they are these couple are married, okay. Now, he's having a defective X chromosome. X linked dominant. So, now see. Capital X prime dash X again X X sorry X Y last X Y who are affected just tell me sir they go it is the dominant things that these are the dominant diseases one copy is enough one copy is enough they go now Sir, now this is a female. So this is also female. Now females are affected, sir. Females are affected. Why? Because these are the dominant genes. So both the females are affected. So affected fathers, MCQ. Now this is a father. Okay, now he is a father. Now, right, father is going to spread disease to whom? So fathers, affected fathers. Spreads disease to daughters okay affected father spread the disease to daughters sir. but here males are lucky males are spared okay males are spared sir why because in males in males x chromosome is always always coming from the mother okay x chromosome is always always coming from the mother here in this condition mother is normal here the mother is normal, right? 
yeah father doesn't affect the sons true fun more father doesn't affect the sons mother okay so father is affecting the daughters now for example in this condition they go now i am taking this daughter sir this daughter okay she survived now she is having the disease now she is marrying okay she got into the uh, marriage now she is married sir see this is the daughter xx now she married okay now what she is doing sir she is marrying sir she is marrying whom she is marrying she is marrying with one more like now she is marrying with one more person uh, with person who is x and y okay now tell me what happens now tell me what happens okay this is the affected mother right affected affected mother now this is normal mother healthy father healthy father now देखो व्हाट हैपेंस दिस इज अफेक्टेड मदर ना व्हेन दे हैव चिल्ड्रन ओके एक्स डैश एंड एक्स एक्स डैश एंड वाई एक्स 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 वाई ओके सो हु आर अफेक्टेड सर नाउ द मदर्स आर पासिंग द डिसीज टू बोथ sons as well as the daughters now in this combination in this combination okay now i have taken this female now i have taken this female now affected female now when she married okay now when she married with a healthy person okay see now how much percent of the offsprings are affected sir 50% of the offsprings are affected that is both female is affected female this is the male okay both females and males are affected male child as well as female child is affected so now take a note affected females pass okay affected females pass the disease to 50% of offspring okay you should know this both the things see first condition affected male sir first condition is affected male sir father affected okay that's affected male affected male is affecting only the daughters affecting affected male is spreading the disease to only only daughters but affected mother affected female is spreading the disease both to daughters as well as the sons 50% out of this four children 50% of the children are affected so both male affected female affected so father only targets the females mother targets both males and females okay so these are the points which i want you to know the examples the final last and final thing examples of examples of x linked dominant diseases first one is alports alports ah mother sir doing the justice for a mother all children are equal okay 50% of the children females will be affected 50% of the males will be affected okay so alports syndrome okay the kidney pathology which will cause the uh, 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 nephritic syndrome okay alport syndrome next red syndrome next vitamin d resistant rickets okay vitamin d resistant rickets and finally incontinentia pigmentae okay Okay, incontinentia pigmentae. So these are the four diseases which I want you to know. Okay, these are the four diseases which I want you to know. Alport syndrome. Okay, these are the four diseases: Alport syndrome, Red syndrome, and vitamin D resistant rickets, incontinentia pigmentae. These are the diseases which will follow X-linked dominant pattern. Okay, X-linked dominant disorder. Sir. So with this, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant, X-linked recessive. In detail, whatever is needed for your exam, these are completed. Now in the next. class actually today we have we are supposed to discuss about the chromosomal disorders the chromosomal disorders and non mendelian inheritance okay the mitochondrial disorders actually today we are supposed to discuss those uh, those things but unfortunately we, uh, most of the time was taken okay because these are important topics we we should not just simply leave them so in the next class we will discuss about the chromosomal disorders as well as the non mendelian uh, disorders okay okay fun mode okay monica see you in the next class 
Okay, see you in the next class. Bye-bye for today. Thank you.